Gratitude is difficult for us as a species because we've evolved in a world of predators. We haven't been more or less free of them for long enough for those predator fearing instincts to go away. It's so much easier and natural for our brains to fixate on what's wrong. What was that? Is this what kills me? That it is for us to think about the good things in our lives. This is one of those places where we really need to defy our evolutionary design because usually it's not a tiger coming to get us. You just need to pay your taxes, dear. So let's talk about gratitude and practices that can help us with not only finding, but coming into relationship with gratitude as we walk together down creation's paths. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie. I am a Christopagan Druid and priest of Bridget. Hello everyone, my name is Brian. I am sous chef to the Dodger. Today we're gonna to be talking about gratitude, the thing that comes least natural to me. I'm not saying that I am an ungrateful person. I'm just saying I, I am, despite who a lot of people think I am, I am a naturally pessimistic person. I, I have never seen a cloud without seeing its darker side. I, I, I have to struggle. I have to train myself to see silver lightings. And as we're entering not only this time of year, this kind of season of life, it's more important than ever for us to learn to be appreciative, to have gratitude for the things that we have. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app that you happen to be listening to us on. We do five original Christopagan and Druid episodes every week, Monday through Friday. And you don't want to miss a thing because there's a lot going on in the world and a lot to talk about. Okay. It's funny that you mentioned pessimism as an optimist. I too struggle with gratitude. It's so funny. It's more in that I struggle with expressing it because... There's just a lot of assumption and presumptions that go into it for myself that I had to go through great efforts and practice and doing the works of gratitude to get better about expressing the gratitude that I did feel inside that I saw. But there was that disconnect between the internal and the external. I started my gratitude work through the Jewish practice of brachat, which is saying a hundred blessings or a thousand blessings every day. And I've talked about this before on the podcast. It's not literally saying 100 or 1,000 blessings every day. It's remembering to be grateful. The traditional prayers all start with the same, blessed are you, O Lord, for whatever. And you fill in the blank for what you're thankful for. For example, when you hear bad news, to remind you that there is still light in the world, blessed are you, O Lord, for the gift of hearing. Because even in the dark time, there's... One thing to be grateful for, you could at least hear the bad news. It is a difficult practice to get into. I don't think you have to be traditional about it. You don't have to start with blessed are you, O Lord. And you don't have to even say them in Hebrew. This is a practice that works particularly well. I will very often say a, a blessing from various saints and spirits and guides and guards and gods and whatnot. But it, it's a good I, way to get started. I too found that a very helpful practice to start with getting better about gratitude and it employing it for instance stub my toe right you get that initial moment of pain expletive would fly pick one it's usually some random one because it's a moment of passion the initial thought of wanting to curse whatever you stubbed your toe on that caused that pain it is such a wonderful and dramatic shift in your mind to try to take that practice to stop to interrupt that moment of reaction and to pause and have a moment of action to then have to think about, I just went through this pain, this horrible experience. What is a blessing in this? I would come up with, well, you know, on the plus side, my nerves are working correctly. My foot is properly operating. I got to feel that sensation because we have a friend who doesn't have that opportunity in their life. They have nerve damage in their foot. And they don't even know when they stub their foot because they don't feel it. There's been a couple of times where he's come over to the house and like, your foot's bleeding. Yeah. Or the or like when the doggy was a puppy and she, she liked to play with their foot and would be chewing on it. And we we're like watching something and we look down and be like, oh, the dog's chewing on your foot. We, you know, stop. <laughs> stop chewing on their foot. Like, to stop and say that blessing. Thank you, O oh Lord, for a properly working foot and give me this opportunity to be mindful that I have a healthy 
working foot, even if I just jammed it for a moment. This works in an interesting way when we apply it to one of the practices Matthew Fox teaches, that is to pray the news. The practice of praying the news, if you've never done it, is difficult, it is hard, and it has multi-steps. Prayer, as we've talked about before, is a radical response to life. It is the way that you live. Every moment of your life is prayer, not just when you are saying certain magic words to the spirit world. Praying the news, the way I do it, is when I am going through the headlines and looking through the news, five steps. You might want to say four, but five. How can I take this news story through all four paths of creation spirit? Given the news lately, I'm almost always starting at the Vienna <laughs> Remember, there is spiral dance. You don't have to do them in any particular order. So you don't have to go from the via negativa to the via creativa that you don't have to, but the via creativa is born out of the union of the via negativa, the via positiva. Whether you start with the via negativa or the positiva, they do give rise to the via creativa and the via creativa tends to give rise to the via transformativa. You may want to try to keep that kind of a flow, but it's not necessary. You may think of a transformational thing that you want to do first, right? Whatever that first reaction is, whether it's creative, a moment of awe, a moment of just emptying, a moment of pain, sitting with it, with it for a minute and starting your prayer there. Whatever that initial reaction is, just taking that energy and saying a prayer. And I want to remind you, because we live in this world where everything is just beautified, groaning, moaning, grunting, and crying are all prayer. It doesn't have to be coherent words. You, your prayer, your via negativa prayer could be being struck dumb in silence. Keening is a prayer. Keening is a prayer. Now, be kind to those that are in hearing range. You yeah. may want to warn them ahead of time so they don't like get filled with dread and, and worry and concern because keening can be a very powerful experience for everybody around. Yes. Don't think that you have to come up with eloquent speech. I think we have distorted prayer into this eloquent speech. Prayer could be something that's in your body. You could be just driven to move, to paint, to write a poem, to go make brownies. All prayer. Again, every action that you take is prayer. You just should be more mindful about the contents of prayer. Start with that initial reaction, whatever it is. Weird news story makes you feel sad because that seems to be what the news really wants to do to people. So we'll start there. Weird news story makes you feel sad. Okay. Feel sad. Don't punish yourself for feeling sad. Let yourself feel it. And remember the other part of the via negativa, it's letting go. It's opening that spaciousness. So you feel sad, and let it go. The best of your ability, let it go. Okay, now we start in the via negativa, which is not always the best place to start. So we really want to pair this with a via positiva. Where, where in the story can we find all wonder, gratitude? Oh, wait, wait, there's that word, gratitude. And this might be as simple as one of those prayers of blessed are you, O Lord, who gives me the ability to learn the news. And that is a blessing. That is something to be grateful for. There are a lot of people who live in a lot of countries where they don't get to know what's going on for real in their lives and in the world. And that may feel like a cop out to you, but if that's all you have, let that be what, what you have. Well, even the, even the simple phrase of thank God it wasn't me, which people feel guilty people about, feel guilty about, but you shouldn't. Because that is that step of the process. Now, if that is the entire process, that can be problematic. But this is one of five steps. It's okay to say, thank God it's not me. I grew up in the Ozarks. The, the most common prayer of that kind is the, you know, oh, but by the grace of God. Yeah. You know, because that could have been me. Yeah. Which is a slightly different way of thinking about that. But be honest. Prayer should be honest. And don't. Punish yourself. If you're angry, blessed are you, O Lord, for the gift of righteous anger. That is a blessing. Or for having the energy. Yeah. For, for having that surge of energy that you now have that you can use for something. And then we go to the via creativa. What is something creative that we can do with this energy? And for a lot of people, that's go to social media and post something. But how can you bring your creativity to it? How can you bring your uniqueness to it? How can you be bring more than just the thing bad or, oh, thing good? Because th there's a lot of thing good, thing bad posts and bleh. First, I like to always ask myself, what am I birthing in this moment 
with my next action. Because nobody wants an ugly baby. If you've got that energy, that righteous indignation, it's okay to challenge whatever it is, but be mindful because you don't want to birth an angry rant, an old man yelling at cloud moment. You don't want to birth that, but it's good to, to birth that, that justice, that standing up for justice. Which brings us to the via, the via transformativa. How can you bring, how can this bring change? And again, this is where we have to fight our evolutionary instincts. This is the downfall of Western civilization. This is the worst thing that is... No, 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 no. No. The phrase in our community is, drama queen, please. Yes. Uh, get down off the cross, other people lead the wood. You've got to find some way. And even if it's terrible, terrible news, and we've gotten a lot of that lately, well, maybe this will help people understand how the economy works, actually works. That politicians can mess it up, but they really can't make it better. That it's really not in their power because it's an imaginary game we play maybe it'll help them understand maybe it will help people realize what they have because let's be honest the phrase is true you don't know what you got till it's gone and a lot of people are starting to realize the things that they used to take for granted because they don't have them anymore it's a terrible thing to look at for change but it is a change now don't just try to justify because that's not what we're doing here again we're trying to it's that raising sparks thing we've talked about before you're always trying to dig through all of the crap, all of the shell that's there to find the little spark that can be used for something beneficial. It's always this pra practice of excavation. And no matter how small it is, th there is a kernel of light in even the darkest stories if you can dig down deep enough. And it's hard and it may be, and I'm not saying in, I am not saying it ever justifies the bad story, or makes the bad story worth it. But if we're going to make anything good come from it, we have to find that little bit, that little bit of light. A lot of gratitude practice is that very practice of bypassing our natural instincts. So natural instincts is fight or flight or freeze. Yep. And gratitude is about choosing to take action, deliberate action to pause that natural process and then step out of it, some might say, to evolve beyond it. Because, like I said in the intro, we evolved to be afraid that there's a lion in the tall grass. That that coiled thing in the corner is a snake. That, that is our instinctive reaction to everything is, this is the thing that could kill me. This is the thing that could do me hard. This is the thing to be afraid of. And it is not easy to move past that way of thinking. The more tired and burnt out we are the easier it is just to slip into those free programmed roles of everything is bad, everything is going to get us. To me, nihilism is just a surrender to the most animalistic instincts that we have of just living in fight, flight, or freeze because you no longer have the energy or the will to fight through it. That's not a judgment on people who are nihilists. It's really where a lot of my compassion comes from for them. A lot of it, I feel, is that they're stuck in that freeze where they have just accepted the doom of that tiger coming to eat them. They've just gone, I'm food. They've given up. I, I don't think it is healthy for us to ever just accept, oh, I guess I'm just food. I, I don't think that's a good place to live in. And also, most of the things aren't tigers. They're paper tigers. Very literally. Very literally. This is why that digging process is important. Because most of the things that we are told to be afraid of, or that this is going to be the worst thing ever. And no, the, the world has seen so many mass extinctions. Like the worst thing ever was probably when the asteroid hit the planet and like killed off 90% of life on it. And no, it's a sad comparison to try to make, but worst thing ever, giant asteroid hits Earth, kills 90% of all living things. Worst thing ever. Great dying gets on that list. Yeah. You know, being, being in the market of Pompeii on that terrible day, that is definitely for, you, for, for, for all the people in Pompeii. Like Pompeii. That's a far worse day. Yeah. It's a far worse thing. Getting bad news can feel devastating. And a lot of that is our evolutionary instincts. It is difficult to work through them, to process past them, and to find those things to be grateful for and to find that little bit of light that we can then build from. And remember I said there were five steps, so we've tried to find that one little thing. That little thing could be, here's how I resist that. It could just be that. The fifth step is, what actions am I going to take about this? 
It's one thing to say, here's how we stand up to this policy or this thing happening or this storm that's coming our way. Yeah. Okay. So you have planned out, here's where you're going to go for shelter. Here's your supplies to get through. Should the worst happen? Yeah. But if you don't do step five, which is the actually doing it, which is something we as a species are really bad about. We're really good at identifying worst case scenarios, even making plans for worst case scenarios. Our government has a plan for how to deal with a zombie outbreak, even though that is a, a near impossibility to have happen. But what we've learned from how we've dealt with the pandemic and other experiences over time is, but would we implement that plan? Probably not. That's step five. If you've made a plan, implement the plan. How are you going to get through? How are you going to help other people out? How are you going to take action? And remember, you have to be realistic in that. If you have mobility issues, you're probably not going to go out and march. If you have health issues where you can't be exposed to a lot of illness or anything, you probably shouldn't be thinking about going out and protesting because that's not going to be helpful for you in the long term. And we want all of us to be here for the long term. So you have to be realistic. How can you talk to people that you know that are physically able and motivate them to actually go out and take action? How are you going to be able to support them while they're out there taking action? What are the things that you are capable of doing without giving yourself excuses of it's so much bigger than I am? Yeah, everything's so much bigger than you are. But what actions are we going to take? This is why gratitude is so core to the heart of all of this process. If those actions are, I am going to shame other people. One, you're not acting out of gratitude. And two, that doesn't work. That hardens them in whatever opinion you're shaming them on. Like the science is in on that. Shame does not change people's actions. It just makes them repeat them out of an sheer defiance of you. So if your goal is to shame people, you've lost. You're, you're working for the enemy at that point, And you need to acknowledge that. I'm saying that very cold and hard because there are a lot of people that are really helping the bad guys while convincing themselves they're doing good. And you're not. It's the same thing with wanton destruction. Yeah. There are times where you have to break a thing down, but it, that is step one of a process of building back up. And if your actions are just wanton destruction, once again, not good. In everything, I am always an advocate of nonviolence. What is violence? The forcible removal of another person's agents. If you are engaging in the forcible removal of another person's agency, whether that's in damaging their business, their life, their livelihood, their home, their property, their bodies, whatever, you are part of the problem. You do not stop violence with violence. That's not how that works. I know all of the arguments that are out there of sometimes you have to build up a backfire to stop a fire from getting to it. Yeah, but you don't go and burn somebody's house down. So their house doesn't burn down. One of those is clearing refuse out so the fire doesn't spread. The other is doing violence. You have forcibly destroyed another person's house. No, you don't do that. This is where we have to be centering all of our actions in gratitude. Because if we are acting out of any other place, any reactive place, we are going to be part of the problem. We are not going to be making things better. And Trust me, I understand, especially for any of the younger people listening, and we've had a recent influx of younger people listening, you do not want to hear a word that I'm saying. But realize, I may be an older person now, but I was there. I remember the AIDS crisis. I remember the queer rights fights that we went through in the past that we're apparently going to go through again. I was there in 2004. We're seeing it all over again in 2024. Yeah. You can't be what the detractors say that you are. And this isn't about respectability politics or anything like that. It's most people see chaos. They go, no, it turns on that fight, flight or freeze in their minds. You have to find better ways for it. You have to win through community building. That's how we went. As much as I love act up and the actions that they took, the things that actually got people to start changing their minds were the AIDS quilt. If you don't yeah. remember that, if you're not old enough to remember the, the AIDS quilt or the impact that it initially had, where they literally just covered the mall in tiny squares, each for a victim who had died from AIDS, and how powerful it was to bring that home to people, how 
devastating how much this was just crushing people to see the grief in people's faces that honesty that sincerity is what won the day that is the way forward you can even think of it in simple terms of like chores around the house when you yell at someone for not doing the dishes they might do it they might not they're going to have resistance they're going to grumble through the whole process if you thank them for doing the dishes next time it comes time doing dishes they're going to be incentivized to do it if they get thanked again they're going to be incentivized to do it even more finding gratitude is hard it really is and i say this like i said as a died in the wool pessimist i this is hardwired in me i i naturally natively see the world in the worst possible light and have to go through a whole mental process to get to any positive anything ever it's just how i am wired nihilism serves no purpose other than to keep you first it is not a viable option because it is choosing inaction even so-called positive nihilism yay you're happy about standing still and not doing anything isn't that wonderful angry outlashing like we said in a couple episodes back it wasn't the riot at stonewall that changed the world it was the organizing afterwards it's so important for us to realize that it was they were ironically the gratitude for the uprising that so many people stood up for so long because the riot wasn't just one night if you don't if you don't like looked into the stonewall riot we often make it sound like it was one night people no like it was a protracted series of events like they pushed each other the cops and the protesters pushed each other back and forth and back and forth for a while but it was that gratitude that they stood together in solidarity that they realized that they could unite that caused the organizing gratitude is so powerful which is why every powerful interest tries to prevent us from having it because even if you're just grateful for your friends even if no matter what it is the only thing you could be grateful for is at least i have my friends and my chosen family that's a good place to start start there if you don't have close friends and a chosen family there's your action plan put that together and have that because you're not trapped in your blood family and you can choose your family you can choose those who are healthy to be around and good for you to be around and be grateful when you find those people i have so many mothers and so many fathers that i refer to as mother and father that have helped me through so many things i have so many siblings around the world i have so many siblings that we have helped each other out through so many things chosen family is a powerful powerful thing but nothing good ever grows from hate nothing good ever grows from fear fear is to go to star wars quicker easier more seductive because you can take advantage of those natural instincts in people it is so much harder to motivate people without going to those natural and born instincts but here's the thing you will never scare someone more than an actual monster can and that is the truth so if you think well if they're going to use fear we should use fear you'll never out monster a monster unless you become a worse monster and then you're the problem now you have to find a better way and that better way is always through nonviolence. and one of the hearts of nonviolence is gratitude be grateful think, think about when gandhi was leading the fight for indian independence they were grateful that they could make their own salt which was illegal they could weave their own clothes which was illegal they were two defiant things and dressing and eating and living so simply because they could they didn't rely on their colonial oppressors for any of the things that they were doing and they were able to show their own strength and develop that gratitude and that community that helped them get through to the other side that's what creation spirituality teaches us that you start with the via positiva you do everything in your power to start there with awe wonder and gratitude if you don't start there well that's step two is to get yourself there because nothing grows out of the via negativa nothing grows out of the via positiva it's the union of the two that makes the fertile ground for things to grow you need the fertilizer and the water and that's the great lesson of creation spirituality i hope this episode helps you out i hope it's motivated you i don't like talking like this but i am frustrated and hopefully you can see demonstrated throughout this episode me trying to take that frustration that anger that innate pessimism that i have that we're going to make all the bad choices and i'm trying to find the things to be grateful for 
the things to be in awe of and the things to have wonder uh, for and to let go of my fears and find a way to move forward. Hopefully we demonstrate it through this episode, the process we're talking about. Because if we're going to have four more years to practice this really, really well, hopefully this is helpful. And remembering that good things can grow out of tragedies. When Mount St. Helens erupted and all that volcanic ash blasted all over the place, lots of devastation, destruction. For decades after that, vineyards all up around that region produced amazing wines. Ash was literally shoveled into dump trucks and shipped to the vineyards. They paid lots of money to transport that just to have that for growing grapes and making amazing wine from that. The most fertile soils in the world are through volcanic spillways. Certain trees and plants need that fire to go through to grow anew. It's weird. It's weird to be grateful about those things, but it can be done. And it's not that you're wishing it to happen. It's yeah. that you're being thankful for the good things that are there. Yeah, I hear so many people just kind of in this place of, well, I guess it's time to dance as rum burns or what, a, what have you. It's just let it burn down. And no, no, I, I'm going to defend my people, those who are here to make the world better, those who can't defend themselves to the best of my ability, which may not be a, a lot. I have, like I said before, I have mobility issues and a lot of other things. I know my physical and mental limitations, but I'm going to do what I can. And that's all I think we can ask of any of us. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, I would love to know in the comments, because this is going to be a hard practice for everybody. And I know a lot of you don't leave comments and are probably about to hit the, you're done with the episode, but please, to be valuable for all of us, name one thing you are grateful for right now, not ironically, oh shucks, in the comments. I would love to know what you're grateful for. And I think you need to make sure you know at least one thing you are grateful for. Silly answers are more than welcome, but silliness is holiness. So many ways. I would love to know. If you're listening to us on Spotify or YouTube, you can leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else, even if they say you can leave a comment, they won't let us know that you did it. We won't be able to see it. So you can leave a comment there because engagement is magic. But then head over to creationspassive.com, click on chat, and you can leave a comment there and let us know what, you, what you're grateful for. While you're there, if you happen to have a few dollars, you can pass our way. You can think about joining a membership or you can support us on Ko-fi or Patreon. That money really does go a long way to help us out, put food on our table, roof over our heads, and keep the power on. And by the way, over at Kofi, you can do one-time donations, just so you know. It's not all like you have to sign up for a subscription plan. Sorry, things are a little tight right now. If you don't have any money, trust me, I understand. Like I just said, things are a little tight right now. If you think anything that we've done, this episode or any other episode will be helpful to others, share it with them. That helps us to grow and helps us out a lot. And as we're on the way out, I'm going to say a little prayer to an angel who doesn't get a lot of prayers. Oh, dear and blessed Barachiel, Archangel of Blessing, help us to see what we have in our lives to be grateful for and help us to see the ways that we can be a blessing to others and bestow blessings on the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.